What an exciting day in Pokemon Go PvP. The Season 12 Go Battle League announcements have been dropped like a day before the commencement of the season. It's finally here. And if you haven't had a chance to take a look at the announcements anywhere else or get any analysis of what they mean, then we got you covered. My name is Fish, I'm from Pallet Town PvP, and we're a community of battlers dedicated at great education, entertainment, and growth around Pokemon Go PvP. Let's take a look through these announcements and give some hot takes and cold takes and whatever kind of takes you're after, we've got them here. So, first, the dates, obviously, starting Thursday, September 1st at 1pm American Pacific Daylight Time, going through until December the 1st at the same time. And, uh, your, your rank will be reset, as they are every season. Don't forget to pop a star piece. You get so much Stardust at the end of the season, especially if you hit like Ace and above. It's a huge, huge amount all at once, and you want to be able to capitalize on that. So I know it's really exciting. You want to get like, as soon as the season starts, you want to get into the battles and start ranking up straight away, get to like season six before the end of the, uh, season six, uh, uh, rank six before the end of the first day. Take your time, pop a star piece, then click the battle menu, and you will be handsomely, handsomely rewarded. So. Uh, here is a light schedule for, see what I did there, a uh, light schedule for the cups. Now, we're just going to skim over this for now and then go in depth into each of the cups later in the video. But interestingly, what they've, oh, sorry, one more thing that uh, I need to mention. It says like September 2 to 9 for me because I'm in Australia. We get kind of get everything first. It automatically adjusts for my time zone. For uh, everyone else, it's going to say like sem September 1 to September 8. So just put everything back one number in your mind so the interesting thing they've done here is that previously they reduced the time for each of the cups down to a week each um, this time they've kept the custom cups at a week at a time but they've increased the length of the open leagues to two weeks at a time so we've got two weeks of great league followed by two weeks of ultra league and then two weeks of master league then we have one week of all three leagues together and then it cycles again. Great League for two weeks, Ultra League for two weeks, Master League for two weeks. The Custom Cups are only there for one week. So the first week of Great League will also be having the Little Jungle Cup Remix. The second week of Great League will be having the Psychic Cup. First week of Ultra League, the Weather Cup. Then Ultra League Premier Classic is back. We've got Master Premier Classic is back. I know a lot of people will be happy about that. Evolution Cup is coming in then we've got halloween cup returning once again halloween cup ultra league edition which i think is a super super interesting idea willpower cup ultra premiere element cup remix and catch cup season of light edition so here's probably the first hot take of the session where for me personally may not reflect the views of pallet town pvp as a whole I don't like this. I I actually prefer... So, when it dropped from two weeks to one week for all cups, I was a little disappointed in that because I prefer two weeks. It's, I feel like I'm, I'm always someone who plays custom metas when they're around, nine times out of ten, and I feel like I need the first week to get used to the meta, for the meta to develop and solidify. And then the second week is when you can kind of take the most advantage of your knowledge of PvP and make the most gains. Um, one week I just felt was not enough to get used to anything. It was just over before, like, and in people's minds it was over before the thing had even started because they were already thinking about the next cup, trying to work out their team for, you know, what was coming this Wednesday or Thursday or whatever day it changed over. Um, the open leagues... I didn't think needed to be two weeks. That was the one that I felt would get too stale if it was two weeks. Um, and, and that is the biggest complaint of a lot of people who prefer all the cups being one week was that, you know, two weeks uh, allows it to get too stale and boring and you're, you're ready to move on. So I get that. Um, you might fall into either camp. Let us know in the comments what you think, whether you prefer one week for all cups whether you uh, like the way they've done it here, where the open leagues are two weeks, or whether you think you agree with my view where it should be the other way around. The open cups should be one week at a time, and the custom cups should be two weeks at a time. Interested to hear what you think. We have Go Battle Days back again. These ones, another hot take, not as exciting as Season 11. 
awesome to have go battle days. I will take 20 sets of battles any day of the week. Um, but yeah, not we're not getting like legacy Pokemon like we were last time. Uh, that's okay. The first battle day is happening Saturday, October the 1st from 12 a.m. to 11.59 p.m. local time. And it is a Guzma Go Battle Day. You will receive four times Stardust from win rewards. And the number of sets you can play per day will be increased to 20. There will be timed research on the day, focused on battling, um, and it will give you extra XP, rare candy, a watch and bracelet for your avatar, inspired by Guzma, and an elite charge DM. That's the thing that excites me the most. Uh, trainers who have already received the watch and bracelet from the rank 20 rewards will not receive another and we'll get to that a little bit later um, Important thing to note is these stardust rewards do not stack so you might have noticed eagle-eyed viewers will notice that uh, Master League up here uh, That we are getting three times win rewards from whoop, win stardust from rewards whatever English is hard <laughs> um, on during that cycle anyway it will not stack so it's not going to be like three times four you're not getting 12 times stardust it'll just change to like one extra factor um, you'll get four times rewards than what you would normally on any other day of the week basically here we go next one mill tank go battle day happening from Sunday on Sunday November the 6th from 12 a.m to 11.59 p.m. Again, four times Stardust from win rewards and 20 sets. And the featured Pokemon is Miltank. Miltank will be guaranteed to appear as a reward encounter in each set. The first win reward from the basic track will be a reward encounter. The second through fifth win rewards will remain unchanged. All win rewards from the premium track will be reward encounters. So if you are... Oh, and you'll have an increased chance of encountering a shiny Miltank. So if you are a shiny hunter and you really want that blue moo... That might be a good excuse to spend some of that, uh, some of those battle passes that you're not using anywhere else on a premium battle track in Go Battle League. You might be thinking, if you haven't heard these announcements anywhere else, you might be thinking, why Miltank? Miltank is a bad Pokemon. What, what is the point of that? Have I got news for you? <laughs> that will come later in the video. Uh, again, timed research. Giving all the same things, so, or most of the same things. So, the XP, the rare candy, and the elite charge DM. Yes. Uh, and this time, instead of the avatar items, you're getting the meal tank encounter. Active leagues. Um, it was Master League and Master League Premier Classic in the previous one. This time, it'll be Ultra League and the Willpower Cup. Let's go to the rewards. So, your guaranteed rank up encounters, the thing that you are, you know, the, the first time you. Uh, you get a reward encounter at this rank then you will be guaranteed to get one of these pokemon so at rank one you're guaranteed a pincer at rank six it's a mindfu first time you hit ace it's an aksu veteran is noibat expert is gumi and at legend of course you get that pikachu libre that coveted pikachu libre your standard encounters from rank one you get poliwag great one for pvp wingull also great. Metatite, also great. Woobat, not so much. Um, Litwick, one that I want to be great. I want Chandelure to be better than it is. It's it's a bit too glad. You know what? It's I think it's a bit underrated. I think it could actually be better than what people give it credit for. Anyway, uh, from rank 6 up, you get Skarmory, Frillish, and Mindfu. Skarmory and Frillish are the big two. That was the text message. Uh, from rank 11 up, you get Onyx. Lickitung, Hitmontop, and Ralts. Ralts is... Oh, and sorry, and Phantom. Ralts is an interesting one. It's... Gallade can have use in PvP. Ultra League, I, I, I really like it. Um, it is probably more useful as a fairy raid attacker. But yeah, if you want a Gallade, that's that's a good one for that. Phantom is huge, obviously. Onyx, to get your XLs for a Steelix and Ultra League. I really like Steelix and Ultra League. I don't think it's used enough. Lickitung, same thing for Great League, obviously. Him on top, not as exciting. Rank 16 up. Espeon, Umbreon, Miltank. And at rank 20, you get a chance at the five-star raid boss that is currently in raids. At Ace Plus, you get Axu. Veteran Plus, Noibat. 
Expert Plus Gumi. Uh, again, that mill tank is going to be very interesting for reasons that we will get to later. The Go Battle League Timed Research Pass. For our most dedicated battlers, a pass to access battle theme timed research will be available in the in-game shop at no cost once Go Battle League Season of Light begins. This timed research will keep track of your victories throughout the season. Each research page will require 100 wins to complete, and doing so will reward you with a small amount of Stardust and items such as an Elite Fast TM at 400 wins or an Elite Charge TM at 500 wins. Keep at it throughout the season to see how far you can get. Now, let's put that into context. I checked earlier. My wins were at um, a bit over 1,100 or al almost 1,200 um, out of almost 2,300 battles. So around a fifth, it's it's pretty safe to assume that you'll get around a 50% win rate. So basically to get 400 wins, you're having to do around about 800 battles. If you want to get your 500 wins you got to do around a thousand battles now uh what does that mean like how easy is that to achieve let's say for the sake of maths uh, easy maths that um there's 90 days in the season it's probably like a little bit more like 94 or something like that but let, let's just say 90 to battle 800 times in 90 days you've got to do it's like nine battles per day or something like that um, to do, oh, hang on, let me, let me, uh, check my math here. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, so about nine battles per day for 800 battles for the season. And if you want to, if you want to get to a thousand win, a uh, thousand battles in 90 days, then you're looking at around 11 a bit more than 11 battles per day so that's the cost <laughs> if you if you think you can do that like so for some people some people in in uh our circles that's going to be pretty easy for some other people you might have to step it up now you know what the what the requirement is you got to do around 11 battles per day if you want that elite charge dm i think it's a, a cool little cool little thing that they've added in all right Avatar items and other rewards. The Pikachu Libre Avatar items will be rewarded to trainers who reach rank 3. Trainers will be able to earn the following rewards for their avatar, all inspired by Guzma, leader of Team Skull in Pokemon Sun, Moon, Ultra Sun, and Ultra Moon. At Ace rank, the Watch and Bracelet. At Veteran rank, the Pants. At Expert rank, the Glasses. And at Legend rank, the Shirt and the Pose. There is the Pose. Looks okay. Not super inspired by it. There's, there's been better. Um, I, I tend not to... Uh, like, I like the guitar pose from, like, uh, what was it? Johto Tour or Kanto Tour or whatever. Or Go Fest or... I, I, I tend to use that one over the Legend poses. At rank 19, you will receive an Elite Charge TM and also an Elite Fast TM as an end-of-season reward. All right. Let's look at these cups for Go Battle League Season 12. We've got the Great League. We've got the Ultra League. We've got Ultra Premier where no legendary or mythical Pokemon are eligible. That has not been there for quite a while. Interested to see that come back. And then Ultra Premier Classic, where there's no legendaries or mythicals or Pokemon that have been powered up by Candy XL. Uh, which I believe, if I remember rightly, Ultra Premier is dominated by XL Pokemon. So it's great that they're also throwing in Premier Classic. Master League you know cp limit that's there every season you know what that's about master league premier classic same thing as ultra league premier classic um still a pretty constricted meta but definitely a lot more accessible than your standard master league or even master league classic to be honest all right little jungle cup remix pokemon must be 500 cp or below to enter normal Grass, Electric, Poison, Ground, Flying, Bug, and Dark-type Pokemon are eligible. The three Pokemon most used by trainers, Ace Rank and above in the last Little Cup will not be allowed in the Little Jungle Cup Remix. In addition, Salandit will not be allowed. That's really interesting because I believe that is the first time that they have banned a Pokemon purely because it was OP. It was OP, overpowered, in the original, in, in the last Jungle Cup Remix. Uh, so I'm glad that they have, and there was also uh, accessibility issues as well. So um, 
I, I like that they banned it here. So Skaroopy, Cottony, and Ducklet are the other three. And I've got the custom rankings here for that cup. Let's see. Uh, Wigglytuff is going to be <laughs> like right up the top there. And it's going to... I can see a little triangle forming between these three. Wigglytuff, Altaria, and Stunfisk. Well, maybe not because Alt Altaria is going to be good. But it's going to be completely slaughtered by the Wigglytuff and the Stunfisk. Swinub is also going to be a huge one against it. Whimsicott as well. So uh, Altaria might not be as big of a deal. Then again... It is one of those Pokemon that if you can avoid the hard counters, it'll have a really good showing against most other things. So these are some of the Pokemon that you might find at the top of the list. Shadow Meowth there is interesting. Shadow Dragonite. If you can get a 500 CP Shadow Dragonite, kudos to you, my friend. Next up, the Evolution Cup. This one's really interesting. A po uh, the, the Pokemon must be at or below 1500 CP, and only Pokemon that have evolved at least once and can evolve again will be eligible. So, three stage evolution space. The middle stage of three stage evolution Pokemon. So, things like your Nidoran, uh, Nidorina, sorry, and Nidorino, uh, things like Vigoroth. So, and look, there are some familiar ones like your Vigoroth, like your Zwilus here, Golbat, uh, Dragonair Vigoroth. Um, but then there are some uh, Dusclops here, like. That, I forgot that Dusclops had an evolution because I'm so used to just using Dusclops as the Pokemon over Dusk Dust Noir. Uh, but then there are some other much less familiar ones. Machoke is one that comes to mind. There's your Nidorina. Uh, let's see. Marshtomp it was, was actually pretty good in very, very early PvP. But once Swampert got Hydro Cannon, it just got, like, there was no reason to run Marsh Tomp after that. Uh, Galarian Lanoon. Gloom is a really nice Razor, le razor Leafer that is just outclassed by other Razor Leafers. Um, a tank. So, yeah, there are a lot of, like, uh, it's the cup that I think has the most unique Pokemon viable. Like, the most things that you will not have seen in PvP very often, if at all, before. Next up is the Psychic Cup, where it, it's another one of those just one type only cups. And the Pokemon Mew has been banned. So, we're yet to see a single typed cup. Where there is not like one or two Pokemon that completely, completely dominate. This is no different. Here is the Psychic Cup. Shadow Gardevoir, right up the top there. That's not the Pokemon I'm referring to. Look down here at number five. Malamar is going to be an absolute monster. It is a Psychic type that has very spammy dark type moves and pretty powerful dark type moves how many other pokemon know dark type moves so bronzong with payback but it takes a while to get to those moves uh, zatu i don't know if you're going to use a zatu oranguru okay i'll give you that oranguru might have play uh meowstic starmie reunculus reunculus Re 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 what even is that? <laughs> so, uh, Malamar is one of the very few options that has dark type attack. Gardevoir is going to be its its only counter, really. Like, look at that. Its key losses are all so darn narrow. Gardevoir is the only thing that can really, really punish it. It takes neutral damage from the foul play, um, and it's dealing super effective damage back with charm um galarian rapidash could have play against it with its psycho cut and mega horn it is the malamar is uh super effective double super effective the malamar is double weak to mega horn when i do these things like one take at a time i do get tripped up over myself after 19 minutes so <laughs> forgive me for that uh, so yeah, this this is going to be just Malamar Cup. Malamar Gardevoir Cup. Malavoir Cup. Next up is Weather Cup. 
Only fire, water, ice, and rock type Pokemon will, will be eligible. Here are some of the things that will be relevant. Araquanid, I think, is going to be the biggest one. It'll be the Gardevoir of this cup. It beats Bom Bomber Snow. I checked. It does beat the Cradilly. Um, completely wars the Swampert. Let's see. Lombre, like Ludicolo. All of these are just getting absolutely hosed down by Araquanid. Rainy Cast Form. Rainy Cast Form does have the Thunder, but... Like, the Araquanid can tank a Thunder pretty easily. It'll take two Thunders to take it out. Barbarical could be something. Fury Cut a Stone Edge. Yeah, so many of these things are just getting absolutely cleaned up by Araquanid. So, that'll be the biggest one for this cup. Halloween Cup, we've seen that one before. Poison, Bug, Ghost, Dark, and Fairy Tire Pokemon. And... Uh... Oh, that was the previous cup. Kind of the usual suspects here. Your Alolan Marowak, your Nidoqueen, your Golbat, your Sizor, your Gougy, Crafty, Quillfish, Azumarill. Like, a Pokemon that you will have seen before in previous Halloween cups. Uh, but then, this is interesting. And really exciting, because... We've just seen Silphorina... Um, finally say, you know what, Ultra League is diverse enough where we can start playing around with custom metas in Ultra League. Um, which, which that in itself was a really, really big moment for PvP because it means that not everything had to be centered around Great League. There, you could expand to more of the PvP ecosystem. Go Battle League have now followed suit. They have gone, okay, we're going to create a custom cup in Ultra League, and it is the Halloween Cup. So again, the same types, Poison, Bug, Ghost, Dark, and Fairy types. And is this the one? Nope, that is the one. Let's take a look at the stuff that is going to be big. Nidoqueen, of course. Um, I'm seeing a lot of Poison up the top here. So your Nidoqueen, your Dragauji, Drapion, Gengar is, is Poison type. <laughs> um, uh, Crobat. Then, then we kind of fall off the Skun Tank as well. I'm really liking Genesect Chill here for double resisting the poison types, being able to smack things like your Nido Queen with its Chill, um, Chill Techno Blast. That's the that's the one I'm looking for. Uh, Giratina Altered really doesn't want to see the Chill Techno Blast. We've got uh, Dragauji. It's going to be super effective against that. Mandibuzz, it's going to be super effective against that. Trevenant, super effective against that. So I'm really liking Chill Drive Genesect. I only ever got one when it was in, and I regret that highly. I wish I had at least one for Ultra League and one for Master League, at, at like a minimum. So that, that'll be cool. I'm really excited to see how that pans out. The Willpower Cup. This is a direct copy of a very, very old Sylph Cup. It was called the Nightmare Cup. Only fighting Psychic and Dark-type Pokemon were allowed. And to the point where they even... No, sorry. No. I was going to say they even banned Gardevoir, but no, that is not the case. They allowed Gardevoir, and it was such a centralizing Pokemon in that... This was the second time, right? They did the, the Cup twice. Hard to explain if you don't Sylph or you weren't Sylphing back then. Um, but... Uh, the second time around, Gardevoir was a thing, and it was so centralizing that it just ruined the cup. So, I'm really glad that they have banned it for this cup, and... This is some of what the meta would look like. Sneasler, Galarian, Rapidash, up there again. Mandibuzz, Metacham, Quillfish, Cresselia, I think is going to be quite big. Uh, we've got Sneasel, Hissuian Sneasel, Overcool, Scrafty, Gothitelle is up there again, Miastic, and that, that Miastic is just popping its head up. <laughs> um, Deoxys Defense, Raichu Alolan going to be really nice for like neutral damage against a lot of things, Buzzwall, Wobbuffet. I really like Sableye here. Uh, Sableye is going to be really good against anything that doesn't know Charm. Even the stuff like the Drapion, which, you know, resists the Dark type moves, um, that don't want to hit too many returns and Shadow Claws, so... Keep an eye out for that one. Element Cup Remix. Which is the Fire, Water, and Grass-type Pokemon. And again, 
The same Pokemon have been banned. The Chinchow, Cottony, and Ducklet. So that's this one here. Jupite are up the top here. Volpix with Ember, Body Slam, and Weather Wolf Fire as the recommended moveset. Keep, stay tuned for that because there is something to be said about that. Chikorita, Tepig, Rowlet. We had it very recently, so you're probably aware of what is good and not so good. But having those, those four Pokemon banned... Um, Ducklet was such a, a popular safe swap. Chinchow was such a, a core breaker to like your seals and your, you know what? Actually, seal I'm thinking is going to be quite good because Cottony and Chinchow were absolutely the two most common counters to seal and they're gone. And seal didn't have too much that it could hit back against Chinchow with either. I, I think Seal's gonna be big. This just occurred to me. And finally, the Catch Cup Season of Light Edition. I've never been a fan of Catch Cups. I'm so negative today. I'm never, I'm normally never this negative, but um, I've never been a fan of Catch Cups. I do really like that they put it right at the end of the season. So the Catch Cup, if you aren't aware, is where you can only use Pokemon that you've caught within a certain time period. Um, and so for this one, Pokemon must be great league level to enter and only they, they must be caught during the season of light. So between September 1st and November 30. I think it's cool. Like it's if they're going to do a catch cup, that is fantastic that they've done it right at the end of the season because it just allows you so much time to like you don't have to specifically build stuff to be able to compete. Your chances are you've probably built stuff over the last three months just on its own that you can bring into this cup. So I really like that. Let's look at the Season 12 Go Battle League attacks. Oh boy. The attack updates are huge. So two new moves have been added to the game. Double Kick and Fairy Wind. Double Kick does eight damage in trainer battles. It's also going to be quite high energy. The... Uh, Information has been gotten from the game data that it's going to be quite high energy. We're looking at, um, it's it's going to make it similar to Hex, but doing more damage. So it's a fighting type Hex, basically. Um, Fairy Wind is going to be a clone of Mudshot, but Fairy type, which is really interesting. So there are now two Fairy type fast moves in the game. The first is really high damage and low energy. The second one is low damage but really high energy. So you've got two extremes there to think about. Uh, there aren't too many Pokemon that will know both, um, but it's going to be a real choice to see, to figure out which one you go with on the ones that do have both. Um, there have been some changes to attacks. Zap Cannon, people have been calling for it. Uh, a slight nerf to it. Um, not the damage that it does. It's still just as powerful as it was before, but now it the chance to lower the Pokemon's attack, the opposing Pokemon's attack, is no longer guaranteed. It's going to be a chance. The the, the analysis, the um, the guess, the guesses out there are that, uh, the assumptions out there are that it's going to be a 50% chance. It's going to be 50-50 like Octazooka, um, which introduces a bit of um, randomness into the game, which a lot of trainers don't like. I'm... I'm all for the random element uh, in the game, but yeah, a lot of trainers do find that frustrating. Icicle Spear, the energy cost will be increased. I think it'll be just a five energy increase to 40, uh, which means that <clears throat> the, <laughs> the time it takes to get to the second Icicle Spear won't be as short. It'll be a bit longer. It'll be five for every Icicle Spear, which will be a, like a subtle difference, but a, an important one. Rollout. The energy generation has been decreased. Um, interesting, because Rollout really hasn't had a chance to shine yet. I'm surprised that they are dropping the energy already, but there's probably reasons for that that'll come about soon, that'll, that'll become apparent soon. Ancient Power, they are raising the attack once again. So it used to be 70 originally. It went down to 45. Now it's back up to 60, and the attack and defense increase amount has been lowered. So before, it was a 10% chance of attacking, uh, increasing your attack and defense two stages. 
um, the trade-off for that was obviously it was a very, very weak move. So you were really only using it in the hope that you would get the buff. Now they've kind of balanced it out. It's going to do a little more damage, so it's it's a little more viable to use as a move on its own. But when you do get that increase, it's not as completely game-breaking. It's only going to be one stage of attack and defense rather than two stages. Like, a two-stage attack and defense buff... A, well, a two-stage attack buff is basically the same thing as firing a double super effective move against your Pokemon, and a two-stage defense debuff is basically the same as double resisting the opposing move. It was a huge, huge um, difference that it made. So it's really nice that they've balanced that out a little bit more. Uh, Ominous Wind, they've done the same thing. Silver Wind, they have done the same thing as well. The only difference in those three, like the, these three have always been connected with the buffs and debuffs throughout the history of PvP. The only difference now is Ominous Wind, they've broken that apart from the other two by not increasing the power. And I think the reason for that might be just purely the dominance of Giratina Origin. Quick Attack, energy generation has been increased, which I love because that makes so much sense, doesn't it? You want Quick Attack to be a high energy move. And the energy generation has also been increased for Tackle. Watch out for Bronzong in the little cup if it is ever available again. Attack Availability Updates. Nidorina will now be able to learn Thunderbolt and Nidorino will be able to learn Ice Beam. Mainly moves that will give it play in the Evolution Cup, I feel. Nidoking now has access to that Double Kick, which, while that sounds exciting, I, I know a lot of people who really want Nidoking to be viable. Um, Poison Jab... I still feel like would be a better move, especially considering it is stab, same type of attack bonus. Arcanine now getting the charge attack Psychic Fangs. That's really interesting because it also has Wild Charge and Fire Fangs, so that's both moves can be, uh, the, the attack can be increased, the damage that it causes can be in increased by hitting the opponent with the Psychic Fangs first. Arcanine is fairly glassy. So you do have to worry about that, like, you want to be able to get to the Psychic Fangs and a Wild Charge, but with Snarl, that does make it very possible. I think, I think this will be, this will definitely increase Arcanine's viability, I think. Tentacruel is learning the Charge Attack Scold. That's really interesting. Tentacruel, in the past, has been a bit of an inconsistent Pokemon, because its main move set is Poison Jab, uh, Hydro Pump, and Acid Spray. So the way to play that Pokemon, it, a relatively tanky Pokemon, is to maybe score a, a bait, build up to a Hydro Pump, try and bait him with an Acid Spray. The Poison Jabs are doing more damage uh, while they build back up to a Hydro Pump, and then just completely nuke the snot out of them with a Hydro Pump in the late game. It's a good Pokemon for that reason. This changes its playability. Now that it's running Scold, I don't necessarily think it will be straight up better, but it provides very different play. Now it's a lot more consistent. Now you can just fire straight Scolds to try and overcome a matchup. I think it will be good. I think it'll be a really nice, like, Galarian Stunfisk matchup. Um, you know what? Let's just quickly look that up. Completely unscripted... Unscripted uh, content here. So we've got uh, Pentacruel with, instead of Hydro Pump, give it Scold, and Stunfisk. Oh, that's so bad. Oh boy. That, okay. So, um, that is providing G-Fisk lands the bait. And an Earthquake is doing 82% damage, plus all the Mud Shots in between. So what if... What if they don't bait? What happens then? They still get to the second Earthquake. It is a lot closer, though. The Scold is doing almost exactly 51% damage. So that's... That's actually... So, you know what that proves to me? is that 
is that is that idea that uh, Scold is not necessarily an upgrade. It's just a side grade. It just makes it play differently. Because, yeah, you need... Sounds like you will need a whole bunch of energy lead to overcome that matchup. And, you know, make the right decisions around shielding. But... Makes it really interesting. Now, Galarian Rapidash is going to be getting that new Fast Attack Fairy Wind. It already had Psycho Cut, which did the same thing. It had exactly the same stats. So, it's like uh, the difference between Bullet Seed, Shift Tree, and Snarl Shift Tree. They do the ex exact same things. Uh, it's just a matter of, you know, what type you prefer. You do get slight advantages from, like, being super effective with one over the other, depending on the meta that you're using it in, but it's really, really minimal. Um, it's just... It's really about what you what you like. Um, Haunter is getting the charge attack ice punch. This is probably the least beneficial move change of the lot because shadow punch and shadow ball is such a poison, such a potent combo on its own. Ice punch would just give it a little bit extra something something in custom metas where you know Pokemon are weak against ice, maybe like dragon metas or something like that. Marowak is getting the charge attack rock slide, which is really cool. It does only have mud slap still. So if it had mud shot like sand slash, like it would be it would be really, really nice. Um, with mud slap, it is not as viable, but could definitely see play in certain places. Hitmonlee is getting double kick. That seems so natural to me, right? Uh, and it makes Hitmonlee viable now. It's got um it's got close combat, I know that, um, and I think it's got Stone Edge, like, so it's like Hitmontop, basically. And Double Kick now giving it a, a really solid, fast move. Like, Hitmonlee could have play, finally! It's been just the ugly cousin of the Hitmon family for so long. Galarian Weezing now learning Fairy Wind, uh, which is interesting because with the buff to Tackle, it might not actually need this Fairy Wind buff. Uh, Tackle, I've seen online, it could be compared to like a, a Powder Snow, which is one of the, the best moves in the game because it provides fast move damage pressure as well as providing really quick energy. Uh, so having just a fast energy uh, move might actually not be the best thing for it. Dragonair is now gonna learn Body Slam. Previously, if you wanted two quick firing moves, it would be uh, Dragon Dragon Breath with Aqua Tail and Rap, which which does have viability. Nowadays, you see more Dragon Pulse than Rap, but I, I have used Rap to good effect. Um, Body Slam is just orders of magnitude better than Rap. So if you want two quick firing moves, Body Slam is now the way to go. Dragonite is going to get Superpower, which... It was previously um, put forward as a community day candidate for people to vote on. It did not get the votes, but it benefits from that now because it gets the move anyway and doesn't have to, you know, get an. Have, um, you don't have to use an elite TM to get it, which is amazing. So it'll give us some really nice uh, play against Steel type Pokemon, which is big. Ledian is going to know dynamic, but dynamic punch. Makes it fun. I don't know how viable it'll be. Lantern is going to learn Surf. Oh, man, what a game changer. This gives it bait potential, which is big. It gets to Surf in five sparks, which is super quick. Uh, and that means, like, if you build up to a Thunderbolt and then manage to score a successful bait, like, oh, boy, do doors open up for you. That's really, really interesting for Lantern. Jumpluff will now learn the Fast Attack Fairy Wind, which just gives it like that little bit of extra improvement uh, over Bullet Seed. Like, you don't... I, I think, without looking at the Sims, I think that putting Fairy Wind on your Jumpluff is the right move. Because, like, Bullet Seed, even though it's Stab, is not doing much damage anyway. So... If you're focusing just on energy, you may as well focus on the one with more energy. Hope that makes sense. Espeon is now going to learn Psychic Fangs, which um, it's it's like Arcanine, where it's still probably too glassy to work. The moves weren't exactly what was holding it back, but it is nice to know. Giraffe Rig will now learn Psychic Fangs and Double Kick. There are some people in Palatown who are very excited about this. Um, it does 
give it a bit extra viability. Um, you can choose whether to run Confusion or Double Kick now depending on the meta. And Psychic Fangs allows you to really hit hard with a, a Psychic or a Thunderbolt in the late game. Um, Double Kick actually allows it to hit back at some Dark Pokemon that would have walled it otherwise. It used to do very, very badly against Dark Pokemon. Um, the fact that it was like it had a really nice niche as a normal type, as a Psychic type that could beat Ghosts. Uh, but now it can also challenge the dark types as well. I love this so much. Dunsparce with Rollout. I have been saying for years that Dunsparce would be a good Pokemon if it had a fast energy generation fast move. It now has said move in Rollout. Its charge moves are... It's a relatively bulky Pokemon. Like, I think it's over 2,000 stat product and its charge moves are rock slide and drill run which are two very very good moves very low energy and hard hitting and great coverage as well with the ground and rock there is there's very little that can resist both this is such a huge moment for Dunsparce and I'm all here for it <laughs> I'm so happy uh, Steelix is now gonna learn psychic fangs which makes it even more viable in ultra league um, being able to, you know, make those dragon tails hit even harder, and then the crunches or the earthquakes hit even harder again, like, and psychic fangs, you can get there in four dragon tails, so building up to an earthquake and then baiting, successfully baiting with the psychic fangs, that's going to be such a big deal, um, like, go in against the Galarian Stunfisk, it's no contest, and here's what I've been alluding to, Miltank with Rollout. Now, what are, what are Miltank's moves again? We got uh, Miltank, Body Slam, and Ice Beam. It's also got Stomp, Thunderbolt, and Gyro Ball. So it's suddenly with, I mean, Tackle's been buffed as well. So that's that's a big deal. Um, so now you've got the choice to run it with Tackle or with Rollout, and you've got. Body Slam, that's probably going to be the move you run every time. And then just such a, a wealth of options for the second move. Miltank's suddenly good. And again, I'm here for it. Like, it's... Like, that bulk is really nice. So being able to just fire Body Slam after Body Slam after Body Slam, that... It's going to be good. It's going to be fun. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. Marwa will now learn Fairy Wind, which means you now have the choice between uh, the fast move pressure and the charge move pressure. You can either give it the, the old Fire Fang and Power Up Punch so that it can just chunk away with its bites, or you can give it Fairy Wind and get to like play rough and Iron Head quite quickly and pressure that way. Manetric will get Psychic Fangs. Um, it's the glassiest of the Pokemon that we've talked about here. And its charge moves were Wild Charge and Overheat. Now, it also knows Snarl. So it makes it pretty interesting because, like, being such a high attack Pokemon, it was already going to hit very hard with Overheat or Wild Charge. Being able to debuff defense one stage before hitting them with one of those moves. I don't know how much difference it'll make, but I'm interested to see how much it actually does do. Hammer Up will now be able to learn Incinerate, uh, which it already had Ember, which was a pretty good fast move anyway. I don't think that will really benefit it too much, as much as I hate to say it. Low Punny will now learn Double Kick. What a boon for Low Punny, but uh, unfortunately, I think it's charge moves still hold it back. Swoobat uh, can now learn Psychic Fangs. Uh, interesting typing with the psy Psychic Flying. Not too many Pokemon have that typing. And it'll be just a little interesting extra little bit of um, little bit of strategy there. Anything <clears throat> anything with uh, that debuff potential increases um, strategy around that Pokemon. Floorgess with the uh, Fairy Wind. Slurpuff with Fairy Wind. That's the main one that can be either a Charmer or um, pressure with its charge moves now. Incineroar with Double Kick. So exciting. 
but I'm not sure how much more viable to make it. I think Fire Spin might still be the way to go for that one. Galissapod with Shadow Claw, really good. Still terrible, terrible charge moves. It's got what is it, like Aqua Tail, Aerial Ace, and what's the other one? X Scissor. X Scissor is good. The other two are not. So it's got a great fast move, sure, but it still needs good charge moves to be able to compete. Nihilego is getting Poison Jab. That's really big. That'll be really good for Ultra League and Master League. Really interesting typing with the Poison Rock. Very exploitable because it's like double weak to ground, which is very, very common. Uh, weak to Psychic, weak to Water, weak to uh, Fight. Uh, no, not weak to Fighting. It's... Uh, yeah, it's got, it's got a lot of weaknesses, so it's going to be great offensively, terrible defensively, like a lot of like attack-weighted Pokemon. Double. This came out of nowhere. Learning Double Kick allows it to get to some of those moves so, so quick, quickly, and like good, good moves. So what does Double have? It's got Body Slam, Wild Charge, and Payback. Giving it double kick as well, like that would make it insane. And again, it's a pretty bulky belt. Like anything that's above 2,000, that product is good. Um, so double is going to be great in Great League. And it's going to be pretty good in Ultra League. What does it get up to? 2478 as a hundo. So it gets very close up there. And let's take a look at it. Oh, can we give it double kick? We can. Take a look at it against the meta. Oh, 50-50, here we go. So Machamp's still beating it, Giratina's still beating it pretty nicely. Defense Deoxys, Toxicroak, Ninetales, Scrafty. And if we look at the wins. <laughs> Goodbye, water Pokemon. Anything with water or normal typing is just gone. Your dark type Pokemon is gone. Your, your dark poisons, your interesting uh, Garvantula. Garvantula loses to it. Double suddenly got game. And finally, Runagrigus. Getting Shadow Claw. Now, this is a similar a similar advance in Runagrigus in Runagrigus that what Cock Hot <laughs> Similar advance to Runagrigus's play than what Cofagrigus got. Um It's got Shadow Ball, it's got Sand Tomb, and it's got Rock Tomb. So it doesn't have Dark Pulse like what Cofagrigus has got. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Um, Sand Tomb gives it Bait ability and also the ability to really hammer home with the Shadow Ball afterwards. The typing is not the best in Ultra League or Great League, but in custom metas, like there have been Sylph Cups where I'm like, oh man, a ground ghost type would be amazing right now. And, like, I've looked at Runagrigus and been like, I can't do it. Now, I could probably do it. Shadow Claw is just enough of an improvement where it gives it that viability in, you know, metas where its typing is really, really, that ground ghost typing is really sought after. So, that is it. We've been here for 50 minutes now. Hopefully, hopefully you're excited by a lot of these changes. I know I am excited by a whole bunch of them. Um, if you want to join the conversation, there is a link to the Palatown PvP Discord server in the, the description below the video. You can tell I'm kind of spacing out now. It's getting to the end of the video, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm getting spa spaced out as the video ends. Um, if you want to improve your PvP game, head to our Patreon. You'll find that link in the description as well. For as little as five dollars US a month, you can get re really uh, like access to really cool tools. Like we've got a GBL tracking bot, which tracks the things that people are encountering in Go Battle League. We've got you know exclusive videos that really break down battles 
to a really minute level so you can learn from them. It's really cool. So check all those things out. And we live stream on this channel every, oh, I mean, like it's like four or five days a week, something like that. Um, there's a schedule in, again, in the description. You can check that out. Hang out with us as we go through our GBL battles. That's it. Good luck in season 12. And I'll see you in the next video.